Well, hello there and welcome once again to School of the Spirit. I'm so excited to come your way again and I want to really appreciate uh, my uh, returning subscribers and those who are always viewing every episode that we um, transmit on this platform since the first episode. This is about the 15th and um, I know that we'll roll up to a hundred by God's grace. We are talking about matters of the spirit, the deep things of God. If you want a journey with God, have an adventurous life in the spirit and understand what the realm of the spirit is all about and its relativity to the life of a believer, this is the platform for you. So I welcome you for tuning in. Please ensure you like this video, share it with as many as you can. And if you are new here, you're welcome to please click the subscribe um, bell and um, hit the notification bell to be sure that you get all notifications about everything we're doing on this platform. I want us to go right into um, the discussion for today that I really believe will inspire you. I also believe it will articulate your work with God because some of these things we share, I believe many of us have been experiencing these things. But then when you come across uh, platforms like this, sometimes you get to identify um, your experiences because they are properly articulated through the lens of scripture. So you'll be able to understand what you have been experiencing and then more so you are going to learn a lot that will contribute to your spiritual and mental transformation. So with that being said, I'm going to say a short word of prayer and then we will go right into the lesson today. It's going to be exciting, amazing and life changing. Father, I thank you for your people. I ask Lord that you will open the eyes of our understanding, fill us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see and let us become a better version of ourselves and in our walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And of course, we invite the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of truth, to help us out as we journey discussing matters of the spirit. So we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and I and uh, the focus for this segment of the episode is to deepen the believer's relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand that when God gave us the Holy Spirit, He truly gave us everything. The moment you are saved in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14, the Bible says we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The moment you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you as God's seal that you have been redeemed and you have been purchased as an inheritance for Him. The moment you are saved, you are born of the Spirit according to John chapter 3 verses um, 5 and verses 7 and 8 you are born of the spirit so the spirit of God comes to live in you and when you realize that the spirit of God comes to give you access to the father and all that he has for you and when you realize the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and how that there is nothing else you can do in the kingdom or in your relationship with God outside of the ministry of the person of the Holy Spirit, then you will agree with that statement that I just made, that when God gave us the Holy Spirit, He gave us everything. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 10 that God has revealed these things, the things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and has not entered the heart of men. The things that God has prepared for those of us who love Him. The Bible says God reveals these things to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. 
The Spirit is the one who teaches us these things. He doesn't just reveal them. He teaches these things to us. Same 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 13. And He uses the words of the Spirit, the language of the Spirit. He gives utterance and articulation to the revelation of Scripture so we can understand the things of the Spirit. So life in the kingdom of God is uh, interwoven with several aspects of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit has different offices. Sometimes the Bible refers to Him as the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot see. You find that in John chapter 14, verse 17. Some other times the Bible refers to Him as the Spirit of Life, the one who walks out the life of Christ that is in us. The Bible refers to that in Romans chapter 8 verses 2 and in verse, verses 11. Sometimes he is referred to as the spirit of wisdom in Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse 17. And different offices are located to the Holy Spirit in his reach and impact to the life of the believer. So we are sharing on this so that we can understand intimacy and relationship with the Holy Spirit and know how to take advantage of the benefits and the privileges that this affords us. So we are discussing today the Holy Spirit and I, and we are strategically looking at the Spirit, our helper. The Spirit, my helper. In the previous episode, we saw him as the Spirit that bears witness, and we saw the power of witness in the life of the believer. We saw that he bears witness with our spirits. And that's the affirmation we have received, that we are children of God. We also saw that he bears witness to the word of God by granting signs and wonders to be done. As a matter of fact, there are other aspects in our life when it comes to the witnessing uh, uh uh, uh, function of the Holy Spirit there are other aspects of our life that this finds expression for instance the Holy Spirit is the one that witnesses through your conscience so that you can retrace your steps from sin so that you can be convicted of sin the Bible says in John chapter 16 and in verse 7 that when he comes he will convict the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment he also witnesses to us through our intuition. And this is what gives us the ability to discern. So you see how that he works using our faculties to bring to us the fullness of the experience of the life of God. But today, we want to look at him as our helper. Now, in John chapter 14, when Jesus began to refer to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, there was something that Jesus um, said about the Holy Spirit. There was a word he used to describe the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 and in verse 16, he says, And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The word helper in the Greek is the word parakletos. It means uh, 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 a standby. It means a comforter. It means a friend. It means a strengthener, an energizer, and the list can go on and on. The Bible calls him our helper that will abide with us forever. That means he sent by God to help us, to help the believer. Down in that same chapter of John chapter 14, verse 25, he says, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So, as a part of his ministry, as a helper to us, he 
handles the situation of ignorance. The Bible says he teaches us all things and he brings to our remembrance the things that have been revealed to us by the Lord himself. Now, if you've ever been in an exam hall, if you've ever written an exam before, you'll agree with me that there were moments when you had read for an exam and you felt you were, you were really ready and competent enough to sit for that exam. But then as you wrote the exam, sometimes you could experience temporal memory loss. And certain things you had read, maybe they didn't go from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So you may forget those things, only to come out of the exam hall and remember. And that can be very painful for a student. But the Bible says he brings to our remembrance all so you see that when when you look at this this situation and the advantage of having the holy spirit you discover that the issue of ignorance is heavily dealt with and you see the help ministry of the holy spirit is factored into our very lives the holy spirit does not just help us with spiritual things he helps us in every aspect of our life he has come to help us know the Father because He reveals the Father and the Son. You find that in John chapter 16, in ver from verse 13, Jesus was still speaking about the Holy Spirit. He says, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things to come, so you are not oblivious of the future. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So all of the Father was revealed in Jesus. And now Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit has come to reveal me to you. To take of all that is mine, which is the Father's. So you see that the work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal the Father and the Son to us. To bring accurate perspective. This helps you in your relationship with God. But even in the situations of life, the Holy Spirit has come to help you. The Bible says he brings to our remembrance all that we have learned. The Bible says he tells us of things to come. So we are not oblivious or ignorant of the future. He helps us even in our daily lives. He helps you to discern the path of God ahead of you. He helps you to walk with a sense of purpose in all that you do. He helps you even with your basic needs. In your choices and decisions, you can learn to trust the help ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the reason why he's sent to help us is because in ourselves, if we were to depend on ourselves as men, we would not suffice much. As a matter of fact, you need to understand that the word man is from the Greek word anthropos, which is where you get the word anthropology, the study of man. Theology is the study of God. Anthropology is the study of man. Eschatology is the study of the end times. Pneumatology is the study of the Holy Spirit. The word anthropos, which is man, literally means a being that was created to look above this tells you that man was created to survive by depending on god because man was created in the image of god and so in ourself we, are, we will not suffice much we are not so able enough to help ourselves. We are not sufficient in ourselves. That's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 to 6, that we are not sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. So the Holy Spirit comes to bring the all-sufficiency of God to aid our insufficiency. He brings the almightiness of God to aid our incapacity. Think of Him as a subsidiary or a subsidy scheme all right we may not have enough to pay for something and then the government comes and subsidizes it 
so that the citizens can afford it. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He is God's subsidizing strategy so that we can freely receive by faith all that is provided for us in the kingdom. What a wonderful and exciting ministry of the Holy Spirit that is to the believer. And in many things that he helps us with, I want to show you one very important aspect of our life that we truly need the help of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible tells us in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. It's in plural, weaknesses. Every area of our life, every aspect of our life where we are insufficient, He helps us. There are some people who struggle with habits, with addictions. He helps them. He's there to help them. There are some people who struggle with knowing God. He's there to help them. Take off the blindfold of their eyes and give them vivid perspective in their relationship with God. He comes to help us even with our finances, even with our decisions, our jobs, our everyday life. Everything that represents a weakness in humanity, He has come to aid us. But in all our weaknesses, the Bible points out one of the most touching and one of the most common. It says, For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows that what the mind of the Spirit is, because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So, he helps us even in prayer. The Bible says we don't know what to pray for as we us. In other words, we don't have the wisdom to understand the protocol of how prayer is offered in the courts of God, before the presence of God. So it's the job of the Holy Spirit to help us bypass those protocol. It says we don't know what we should pray for and how we should pray about things but he comes with the wisdom of god takes over our prayers and ensures that our prayers are in line with the perfect will of god this is the reason why when we ask anything god hears us the reason is because through the holy spirit we are asking accurately with the will according to the will of god so in all our weaknesses prayer being one of the foremost is where we experience the help of the Holy Spirit. But you can literally bring the help of the Holy Spirit to every aspect of your life. You can ask Him to help you with anything. Of course, there are things that you necessarily don't need to ask Him for. For instance, if there is a cup beside me right now and I need to drink from it, there's no need for me to say, Oh, Holy Spirit, I can't reach out for this cup. Help me take this cup so I can drink it. That's absurd. That's weird. That's why you have hands. We are talking about experiencing in His help in areas where your humanity is limited. For instance, you need to penetrate an organization or need to get a job within an environment and you don't know anybody within that uh, geography, within that territory. It is the Holy Spirit who will influence the heart of men in your favor. For instance, you had a dream or a vision and you can't remember it. It's the Holy Spirit that brings to your remembrance so you can fully capture what God was trying to say to you. That's why sometimes the Holy Spirit can go back five years in the past and bring to our minds dreams that we had to remind us and to keep us in line with God's purpose concerning us. The Holy Spirit can help you in your choice of a spouse. The Bible says in Proverbs 19 verse 14 that houses and riches are an inheritance from parents, but a good wife is of the Lord. Inasmuch as God encourages us to find according to our will, but you must understand that you can get the Holy Spirit involved in looking for His spouse. And He will give you characteristic features of a woman that will match with God's will for your life. So, it becomes easier to make the choice of a life partner when you involve the Holy Spirit. 
As a matter of fact, we will struggle many times when we don't deliberately engage the help of the Holy Spirit. Just because He's sent to help us doesn't mean He works like an automatic generator, like a standby generator. No. You need to invite Him into your space. So, how can I experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life as helper? How can I ex experience the help ministry of the Holy Spirit? I'll give you a few. Number one, by prayer. You ask Him to come through for you. You pray in the Spirit. Every time you pray in the Spirit, you have automatically switched on the help ministry of the Holy Spirit because He's the one praying through you. He supplies the utterance and your mouth opens up to speak for those utterances and in the realm of the spirit the bible says you are declaring mysteries the mysteries are the secrets of god you are declaring that which is in the mind of god as you pray so prayer number one is the first way to experience the help ministry of the holy spirit number two brokenness brokenness simply means admitting that in yourself you are insufficient without god Brokenness simply means coming to the awareness of your nothingness without God. Do you know that the Bible says God himself is the one that opposes the proud? You know, it is better to have the devil as your enemy or to have a human being as your enemy than to have God as your enemy. Because if God is the one opposing you, there's nothing anybody can do. It is still going to be God who will show you mercy. So the Bible says that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Brokenness means, means hum, humbling ourselves in the sight of God. Declaring to Him that we can do nothing of our own. And then allowing Him to help us. You experience the help ministry of the Holy Spirit in worship. And praise. When you praise and worship the Father, the Spirit of God comes to help you praise and worship better. And then He creates an environment of the presence of God. Because the Bible says in Psalms 22 verse 3 that God inhabits the praise of His people. Every expression of God on the earth is made possible by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when people experience moments of praise and worship and um, get to touch the atmosphere of the presence of God. It is the Holy Spirit that makes this possible. He helps them in the place of praise and worship. And that's why in the place of praise and worship, your spiritual senses can come on, can be switched on. You get to know God. You get to hear from God. You get to perceive what God is doing at that time. Number four, you experience the, the, the help ministry of the Holy Spirit through the help of other believers around you. Most times when we ask God for help, He sends men. Most times when we fellowship with other believers, the Holy Spirit uses their strength to complement your weakness. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs that iron sharpens iron. So someone else's strength, the Spirit of God knows how it impacts on your weakness and uses it to strengthen your weakness. This is the reason why the corporate fellowship of believers is important. This is the reason why the church was instituted. And this is the reason why the Bible instructs us never to forsake the counsel of believers or to, uh, to uh, forsake the assembling of believers. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who believe, well, you don't need to be in the congregation. You don't need to be among a body of believers. You just stay in your room and know God for yourself. God is not concerned about the place. No, God is actually concerned about a place where corporate believers gather. Yes, He has made our body His temple. But there is your, your vertical relationship with God. And then there is your horizontal relationship with other believers. There are aspects of God you will never get to know until you associate with other believers who have captured these perspectives of God. The Bible speaks of us coming to the unity of the faith. The only way you can have a full view of a thing is when you appreciate it from different angles. And we see through the lens 
of other believers who are inspired, who are helped, and who are led by the Holy Spirit. And then finally, for today, we experience the help ministry of the Holy Spirit when we give thanks to God. In thanksgiving, in thanksgiving, in thanksgiving, we experience the help ministry of the Holy Spirit. You see, every time we give thanks, the Spirit and His power is engaged to walk in our favor. In John chapter 6, Jesus, Jesus gave thanks and supernaturally the bread and fish was multiplied. I'd like you to know that the Holy Spirit was the one behind every miracle Jesus did. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And because he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, he went about doing good, even healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Every miraculous act performed by Jesus, by the apostles, was because of the power of the Holy Spirit in them. Jesus gave thanks and bread and fish was multiplied. Jesus gave thanks at the grave of Lazarus and the spirit of life restored Lazarus back to life from the dead. In Jeremiah chapter 30 and in verse 19, the Spirit of God as the mystery behind multipli multiplication is activated. He says in Jeremiah 30 verse 19, Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. He says, And I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. It takes the Holy Spirit to bring to pass these two. Multiply them and glorify them. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to glorify the Son, to glorify the Father. The word glorify simply means reveal in its original nature and form. It was the Holy Spirit who glorified Jesus when he was on earth by the Father. When we give thanks, we experience the help ministry of the Holy Spirit. So here you have it, folks, for today. Learn to practice any of these five examples I've given to you and activate the help ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. In the next session, I want to hear from you what you have experienced of the help of the Holy Spirit in your life. Send me an email. Type at the comment section. Let me know in what way has the Holy Spirit helped you and how relevant has His help ministry been to your life. And I pray that in this season and in the seasons ahead, that you will never be without the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls God our helper, that he is a very present help in times of trouble. I want you to know that because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you are never alone. Say to yourself, I am never alone. Thank you and bye for now.